In today's bad raw file integrate picture edit, I'm gonna take this raw file right here and I'm gonna turn it into a photo like this at the end while showing you the entire process from start to finish in just about 10 minutes. And I've actually stitched together six different raw files, each with a different exposure value into this single HDR file right here. And that is just because there are quite a lot of dark shadows in the picture, but at the same time, there are also quite a lot of bright highlights. So by having this HDR picture, I have a much bigger dynamic range and I'm able to recover all of the shadow details if I want to, as well as all of the highlight details without any noise and with the best possible quality at the end. So once again, the only difference from this to, for example, this uh, raw file right here is just the added dynamic range and how far I can push things. Other than that, it is really the exact same picture. All right, so let's get started with the actual editing. And I think definitely here, a little bit of the crop could work. I don't really want too much of the sky. I'm definitely going to bring up the exposure here, it makes the foreground look a lot better, but at the same time it kind of overexposes the sky, so I'm just going to grab a graduated filter here, drag it over the sky, and go a little bit into the minus exposure to just equivalent that out. I'm going to fine tune that a lot more a bit later on, but just for now I think it does the job. Then I'm going to add a little bit of contrast to give an additional pop. And usually I like to go into the plus shadows, but I really don't like the look here. So what I'm actually going to do is go into the minus shadows and bring up the blacks a little bit. Then I definitely want to bring down the highlights by 100 to retrieve all of that highlight detail. Then with the whites, just going to bring them up a little bit and make the whole picture more dynamic. Now with the clarity, it's very difficult. Maybe I'm even going to go a little bit into the minus. And lastly here with the vibrance and saturation, yeah, I don't really think there's any of them needed in either way for the overall picture. Let's go into the temperature instead. And I definitely like the warm look on the foreground, but in terms of the sky, I don't like what it does to the clouds at all. So what I'm going to do is just reset that, grab a graduated filter and this time drag it over the foreground and just make that one a little bit warmer. And while I'm at it, I might as well add a little bit of whites as well as contrast just for the foreground. And it's really great to work with these graduated filters and just have an effect on a certain part of the picture. So I'm done with the basics, let's go down into the tonal curve then, and I'd really like to add some highlights here, it really helps to get additional dynamic, even though it makes some parts a little bit too bright, I'm gonna fix them in the local adjustments, and with the rest of these sliders, you just wanna play around with them, see what works best, and once again, mainly look towards the actual dynamic and not so much the actual exposure of anything. So from before to after, it just looks a little bit more punchy. Let's skip over the HSL tool because it doesn't really have too big of an effect and go down into the split toning here. I'm just going to go to the highlights first and see if I want to add any colors. Usually within sunset pictures, I really like to add warm tones, but here... Let me actually try out some different values. Maybe I'm just going to add a little bit of warm tones, but once again, I don't really want to add too many of them because then I will lose all of these blue tones within the sky. So maybe around 20 works pretty well here. And with shadows, you could do the exact same thing. Just kind of go through all of the colors and see what works, what doesn't work. And at the end, I think I'm going to make this a little bit warmer as well. However, really just a hint. So here's before any split toning, here's after. Just a little bit more refined. Then detail, just going to add about 60 sharpness. Bring the mask into the right while holding down the all key. Just making sure I only have the white over the parts that I want to be sharpened. And I'm also going to bring the color noise reduction slider to the right to get rid of all of the purple and green sensor noise. It really is a great slider and only has positive impact on your picture. Then, uh, by the way, the lens corrections are very self-explanatory. I just happen to have that done already because I've made the HDR. But transform, also really not useful in this kind of picture. 
Now effects, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of vignetting here, but really nothing much, just a little bit and from before to after, it helps to give a bit more attention towards the center. And that is pretty much all that I'm gonna do in terms of the global adjustments. So I know there are some other tools that you could definitely use and I've made plenty of tutorials where I also covered them. But for a 10 minute video, I really just wanna go over the very important sliders and tools. All right, so let's go into the local adjustments. And I always like to start off with the graduated filters. And of course, I've already added two filters uh, within the period of editing this photo. And you can see it really just helps to equivalate everything out. But now I'm gonna go back into the one for the foreground and just kind of fine tune it a little bit, make it even warmer and maybe even add some more whites and at the same time go back to the one over the sky and also just kind of fine tune that maybe with a little bit of contrast or go into the saturation and make it not quite as oversaturated and maybe even go into the color and just make it a little bit a little bit of a warmer blue I think that works definitely very well and also a great thing that you can do with the graduated filters is for example just go over the top of your sky and make this for once a little bit darker then at the same time increase the whites the contrast and also go into the colors there and maybe just choose a little bit of a different hue of blue maybe here just a little bit darker a little bit more towards the purple kind of colors and at the same time maybe even bring down the blacks and also bring down the saturation a little bit so even from before this graduated filter to after you can see it really has a huge difference and you could really go crazy with it maybe even add another one over the very top and just add a little bit of minus exposure there, also mix that with contrast and so on. And by having all of these filters, you really get some interest within your sky. But I think that's all I'm gonna do in terms of graduated filters for the sky. But in terms of the foreground, I'm just gonna add two very small ones with just a hint of minus exposure over both sides. And that is so I create some additional vignetting and really, it really draws you into the picture. So I think that really maybe just another very small one over the very bottom here as well and go even more into the mind's exposure. That way you can really complexify your lighting and make certain stuff darker than other stuff. And that is really a great idea to make your picture interesting. So in terms of the graduated filters, I'm done. However, I'm now gonna go into the rail filters Actually, before I do that, I just noticed that there is quite a lot of halo on these very high contrast edges where the sky meets the dark trees and I'm just gonna grab an adjustment brush for that, go quite a bit into the minus clarity and then just brush over the edges and that will, for the most part, get rid of most of the very halo-ish and very unnatural look and that definitely looks a lot better. All right, so now I'm gonna go into the rail filters for the dodge and burning, and dodge and burning is just making individual parts either darker or brighter. I definitely think I'm gonna start off with some minus exposure filters here, just for some of these very bright areas. Maybe I'm even gonna add just a very big one over this kind of bottom portion of the, of the overall sky, and just make it a little bit darker. And yeah, maybe fine tune it a little bit, then grab some other ones with a little bit of minus exposure as well. And just go over the areas that still require even more minus exposure. For now, in terms of the sky, it's all about making everything um, not as overexposed, you know, in certain areas. But uh, usually dodge and burning is to make certain areas a little bit more contrasty or more differentiating but for now I've just used them in terms of the sky to kind of equivalate out the exposure. But now I'm actually gonna go into the plus exposure and first of all, I'm again gonna add a very long one right here, just kind of like this and a very, very long one actually. And just go a little bit into the plus shadows 
with this part right here because I really think that this portion with the trees especially could use a little bit of plus exposure, plus shadows, so there's just more detail visible and at the same time I'm gonna add some more plus exposure filters, mix them with white and also add a little bit of warmth and then just add dodging over the picture or the foreground and just kind of complexify the overall lighting, make certain areas a little bit more interesting and really make it seem as if certain, you know, certain spots of light would have hit on the scene. So it's very important that you try out a bunch of different sizes and settings and that you always adjust the sliders accordingly. And it's also very important that you don't overdo anything because it really is an enhancement to your already done adjustments. So you really don't want to overpower anything. But once again, rather make certain areas a little bit more interesting. For example, on the foreground right here, certain crops could use a little bit more light, a little bit more color. And that way you really create differentiation and make stuff interesting. So in this particular area or in this particular picture, I don't think there's really too much to be done in terms of dodge and burning. There are other pictures where I've just added dozens of filters, but here I think it's gonna be, you know, not quite that crazy. Maybe I also wanna go back to some of them and just fine tune the values, because once again, you don't wanna make anything look overdone. And I hope this video won't be too much longer than um, 10 minutes, but I do think it is worth to at least show you the dodge and burning, because dodge and burning is really a huge thing in terms of editing. So let's make just these a few filters a little bit bigger and with that a little bit less body. And once again, it's all about making it look natural. So I think that does the job pretty well, maybe just a very last filter over here, you know, quite a small one actually, and I do think that looks pretty interesting. And then after that, you know what, I'm just gonna grab some other rail filters real quick, add even more color in terms of the warms, go over this area right here and just make it a little bit warmer. And at the same time, I might even make this area a little bit warmer as well. So we at least have a little bit of warmth in terms of the sky and not only the foreground. And this would be the area where you really could add a bunch of different colors. For example, if you would want to add even more differentiation in terms of the colors of your sky, then you could possibly do with the graduated filters. Using the rail filters for that is really a great idea. And perhaps maybe, you know, just add a little bit of, um, a little bit of purple right here, just to get a bit of differentiation. And once again, always want to adjust these sliders and settings so you don't make anything look unnatural. And I'm just going to add a very last one over here, maybe a little bit of a bigger one. And this time go a bit into the very light blues, just like this. And of course, adjust the saturation. So now we at least have a little bit of differentiation within the colors in the sky as well. All right, despite me being over the 10 minute mark, let's quickly see from before any dodge and burning and after, that's really a huge difference in this particular case. And then let's also go into the history and see from before any adjustments. So once again, this is the HDR file, but it is literally just a raw file with extended dynamic range. And after all of the adjustments, I'm really happy with this. There would be a little bit more fine tuning in terms of the dodge and burning in the foreground. But other than that, I'm quite happy with how this picture looks at the end. It looks pretty good, especially considering we only put in a few minutes. Huh. Well, anyways, I suppose it is time to sign out. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.